Hello there, and welcome to an auto-match All-Stars showdown. You've got Markov, the USF force of nature, versus... What are these Mandarin characters we see before us? It is none other than Panzer Grenadier Angreifen, playing as, of course, an Axis faction, playing as the OKV. And this is one of the best maps in auto-match. It's just such a bloody shame it has that bug... The bug that hides your UI, you want to be clicking something and you can't click it, it's not there anymore. Um, and, and, and if it wasn't for that, I, I absolutely assure you that this map would be in tournament rotation for the Master League, but we can't allow it to, to, uh, to be the case, unfortunately. Uh, but as I say, this is an auto-match All-Stars showdown, and the reason I tongue-in-cheek call it such is because these guys are auto-match legends. They... Uh, they live to play auto match one versus one, and they're always online playing it. Uh, and you can't uh, you can't knock them because it gives us hours and hours of entertainment watching them play. Because these guys have attained a, a very high skill standard. One thing they've never attained though is tournament pedigree. I mean, uh, Panzer Grenadier and Graf has never really tried. Markov can't really turn his auto match success into tournament prowess quite yet. Ludwig Rifleman flank here on the Stern Pioneers. They're going to be. Focusing this rifleman in the hope that they get the confirmed squad wipe, but they couldn't quite get it thanks to the f the reinforcements from the northern side. And uh, folks, grenadiers are tagged in for their very costly cousins. Big shout out to call me Dalios in chat. Have I shout out any Twitch chat uh, comments today? It's because I'm starting to do my YouTube uploads on Twitch first. I think my uh, new. Um, kind of hardware configuration can really handle it and give a really good quality setting but it takes about 12 hours to upload from uh, from solid state drive to youtube servers but if i put it on twitch servers first the transfer is about one hour so if you're wondering why i now shout out twitch chat during my youtube cast that's the reason folks grandiers with only three men but a lot of bravery they launched themselves into the cutoff but the riflemen await of course they are do Meanwhile, rear echelons are in a fight against the Stern Pioneers, forcing them away. They did claim the victory point in the south, and the onslaught from the Fortress Grand Aaron is continuing. Riflemen are going to flank around the hay bale. They don't have um, much in the way of backup from PGA at this point. He does have the Kubelwagen. He hasn't been really using it in a combat capacity thus far. And he is a strong contingent of M1 Garand rifles from the US boys. That were told they would not have to fight in any European wars. Well, it's now a world war and they're very much fighting in it. Meanwhile, by the way, the uh, first Grenadiers are trying to push, force away this thorn, thorn in their southern flank, the rear echelon squad. Rifleman pushing up. Through the gap, looking possibly to push on towards this juicy, unexposed fuel point. Here we go, the first round here. Looking to possibly get an angle. How many windows are facing here? Just the one. It's not a very powerful uh, garrison, is it, by any stretch of the imagination? Next engagement I can see emerging will be in the centre, as these first round here make their way against the heavy cover of the tractors and trailers. On the central victory points. We do have a selection. It is for Markov. It is Recon Support Company. We haven't seen any products of it yet. But we may be seeing cluster mines M8s. And possibly combat groups in the future. I doubt we'll see IR Pathfinders. We never really do. A little bit too fleshy. And um, easy to bully around the battlefield from my experience. Riflemen have a low amount of hit points. And Fortran is with a very good push away here. You can see that PGA is a, as a, a top auto match player. He's got very good manpower efficiency. What is this dastardly Kubel up to? Going south to the munitions point, the high munitions point. And uh, Markov's doing the same for his. So neither player has had a lot of munitions to play with thus far. I think that's uh, embodied by the lack of incendiary grenades or the lack of um, Sturmgewehrs in the OKW assailant. Meanwhile, negative covers turn into heavy covers. The first grenadiers 
battle up against these veteran C1 rifles with their three kills thus far. Meanwhile, back in the south, Stern Pioneers push in. Lieutenant Seek Refuge in the garrison as double riflemen make their presence felt. Stern Pioneers drop yet another model. Kubel Vargan finds that there's a 50 cal heading north. Looking to bully this folks in squad. Let's just double check this engagement in the south. The Stern Pioneers are really weary and forced away. Big shout out to Vengertron in chat. Welcome, welcome, one and all. As we see the possibility of AT grenades to this Kubel. Folks Grenadiers are more than a match for them, though. Those Car 98Ks are going to cause severe damage to these low health rifles and that's why he's getting a three quarter ton ambulance out i don't know why they specify the amount of tonnage on the ambulance but they certainly do it's not like there's many other ambulances available in the game but this one isn't quite one ton it's very very pleased to announce it's only three quarters of a ton much like your mother Um, 50 cal watching over the cutoff, but these folks around here can't quite see it, it would seem, because um, they're not flanking it. It would have been an ideal opportunity to do so. And we have Markov repositioning. He can see... Oh, shoot. I just accidentally clicked the minimap. Uh, he can see his opponent thanks to the garrison lieutenant, which is why we had the reposition there. Accidentally clicking the minimap. That is uh, pro-level gameplay from A, and it's why I am a top caster and certainly not a top player. Lieutenant uh, has yet to get a single kill. Stern Pioneer has four of his own. Well, their own, rather. There are four of them. And do we have a first truck? We do indeed. It is the Mechanized Regimental Headquarters. Kubel. Watching on was briefly using detection. And can detect that there are three rifles, all with AT nades available, thanks to possibly really good uh, KD. We're going to check out the stats momentarily. It will go down to... No, we'll keep an eye on the coup. We'll make sure it can get away first, and the folks from ideas, because this blob is coming in force. There's an MG34 out now for a bit of blob control from PGA. Grouping behind the statue... They're up against the truck. Folks Grenadiers. Better cover. You'll notice that only uh, two models are behind it. So they're going to actually forsake the winged angel. And push their way further forward. Actually forcing away the Folks Grenadiers. And uh, meanwhile we've got more of the same. Up against the western side of the uh, rear echelons and riflemen. We also have STG rifle Folks Grenadiers joining the fray. Watching there. Ah, a nice body block there by Markov. A little bit of Kimbo Mad Slice for you. Nearly causing a squad wipe. Doing drag movements. Positioning. Forward facing. Well, facing commands. That's the correct verbiage. Facing commands to halt the retreat of his opponent. Um, and let's take this moment to, to show you the stats. As you can see that the, if, if there was a superior KD, there certainly isn't any more. Um, Folks Grenadiers are the best unit for PGA thus far. On the graphs, you can see the army value. Um, you can see that Markov's actually in the lead at the moment, if you take into account the starting position. And on points held, PGA is in the lead. So it's a very fair battle so far. There they are. They're having a bit of an air air-dropped combat group on the field. Very quick way to get a pack howitzer. And... Some paratroopers. Kubel's ready for action once more. Veterancy 2 already. As the lieutenant with its bazooka could give it a, a very uh, rude awakening. There you go. Good shot from afar. Airborne are on negative cover. Don't want to suffer any man casual casualties. They chuck a cheeky grenade and they get it almost. Can they target it? Yes, they can. They've got multiple rifles coming in from the northern side. Folks, Grenadiers, watch on in horror as it looks like the MG34 could be taken by Markov. Here it is. And they're suppressed. And the MG falls into Markov's hands. First blood. 
for the man from the east, playing as the United States forces. However, PGA, hailing from China, China, is now building a Panzer II Luke's. And I uh, won't give a crap about your MGs, be it multiple in now, with uh, the option for the MG34 as well. Actually going north as we speak, very dangerous. Considering the Lukes could just go straight north and recapture it, that's very dangerous indeed. Another possibility of a grenade, don't forget from the airborne. Let's see where it lands. Just saw that, of course, a gun crew has been lost. Paratroopers looking... Very low indeed, but the pack howitzer saves the day. And the Kubel could actually get a squad wipe here. Well, a crew weapon wipe, rather. What is the SWS doing, you silly truck? We did indeed see that the 50 cal went down. Kubel's got eight kills. I'm uh, bargaining that it was that. And the rifleman have got a full health last model, so they should be fine. And the Panzer II, with its heavy... And long build time is late to combat. Could have done a lot more there. And could have stopped this happening. Well, there you go. We did see a neutralisation in the end. <laughs> Getting platitudes in cast. I think people in Twitch chat are noticing that I'm trying to cast this in a serious fashion. And they're trying to put me off with platitudes. And they know it's going to work because I'm an ego monster. Uh, Panzer II is venturing into Markov's territory. And he's got a heavy manpower equipped army. Look at that uh, reserve of 50 manpower. And that's meaning he can't, of course, get any heavy AT out at the moment. And, of course, he hasn't actually gone for uh, captain. So he can't get the M1 AT gun. Meaning, I tell you what, PGA is uh, demolishing him right now, quite frankly. Double machine guns coming in, but they're not going to do much against this um, Panzer II Lukes with what I can only des be described as a gothic teenage aggression camo. Let's try and get uh, historical on this one. Let's embody Imperial Dane. Uh, fun fact for you here, fun fact for you here. This camouflage is historically accurate. It's actually part of the Hitler Jugend Second Panzer Frei Corp. North Division Camouflage, embodying the spirit of Goebbels. Fantastic. So we do now have historical context for the awful um, non-historical skin. So we can fully feel like we're watching a World War II authentic battle. Thank you, Dane. Thank you. Paratroopers with six kills watching on behind heavy cover, trying to cap the central victory point, but at a cost of manpower. There is a lot of health left on the truck, so they should be fine for now. And the bazooka now should, there you go, force them away. And they've also picked up another bazooka to add up. We've lost an infantry unit elsewhere. It looks like a machine gun's possibly died. Really should keep an eye on what's dying, shouldn't I? I think, uh... no, the pack howitzer was decrewed momentarily. That's what it was. Let's just double check that. There it is. How did he get that, the blighter? Ask some... Uh, we really should have kept an eye on what was killing things. I've heard as a uh, quote-unquote semi-professional company of heroes 2 caster, that's a really good skill. New MG34 for PGA. It's amazing that uh, this, this guy with probably 5,000 hours as OKW really believes in the MG34's prowess. So it certainly must be a useful... Um, implement if even he uses it, you know. Because he would have felt the woes of all the weapons of the OKW arsenal more times than many of us. And he actually relies on the MG34, it seems. He replaces his losses with it. Panzer II Luke's gets 18 aided from afar. Quarterback style. And we've just had... A nice pickup. Stern Pioneers with a Browning. That's not going to be pleasurable. Bazooka rounds perforating. The Luke's forcing it away. Kubel's actually causing some 
resistance, but two bazooka rounds hit it. What a good to and throw battle this has been thus far. It's been a cracker. Let's check out the center. So you see that the paratroopers are starting to amass kills. And uh, yeah, it's really beginning to erupt. I want to check out some of the, the, the descriptions for the veterans to see. Ah, okay, that just gives it the repair crews. I was wondering if they got a little bit more HP with veterans T3. I knew that wasn't the case, but the fact that they can survive two bazooka rounds, I suppose that makes sense, yeah. They did have only a slither of health afterward. I'm probably used to seeing my Kubels, if I've ever used them, like suffer a million bullets to the face before they get bazookaed. So that's probably the difference there. MG34 repositioning, looking to hold the high munitions. He keeps his fuel. He now has the Spare Panzer headquarters, and it's filled out its SAP purchase order, and it's got an authorization for the requisition of a huge cannon. And this man is continuously pointing. No, he's caressing his huge cannon. This is possibly um, something we should keep on uh, for patrons only. Of our OnlyFans account. Or our Pornhub Premium. German caresses huge cannon. You get the joke. You get the joke. Meanwhile, riflemen force their way into the agenda with 50 cal backing them up. We also have a Sherman on its way to finally give some mobile aggression for the United States forces. Doubled up folks grenadiers with their Sturmgewehrs. Operating with impunity, it seems, from behind heavy cover as the Luke's gains its eighth kill, but uh, just as much damage is done as it deals. And it's uh, back for repairs once more. And here's the Sherman. Nice, good old shark facey camo. A classic. And coming up here is two. Cluster bombs land on nothing. Literally nothing. They do cause a double retreat. For the folks around ears. However, send your, send your orders to the Sherman. He's going to go north, it would seem. And we are getting a, a doozy of a battle so far. And it's time to discuss, I suppose, uh, PGA's choices in commanders. Let's see what we have. We aren't seeing right now in our 17th minute of combat. Just double check the lieutenants. Oh, and the Sherman's gone north, by the way, to find. The lieutenants. And the Kubel Ace goes down. Kubel Ace goes down there. Pop, yes, indeed, to the 50 cal. As we just checked what the Sherman was doing up north. And he's reversing now towards the enemy. So his distraction caused us to miss the death of the Kubel Ace. Oh, well. Worst things have happened at sea. As the Sherman now claims his third kill. Oh, and more kills to come. Sorry, he had more than three. I was selecting somebody else, and he just claimed his 13th kill. Now his 14th. This guy is uh, an apex predator. Push Grenadiers are dealing with death here, and they're surely pushed away. And indeed they are, as the Rakettenwerfer tags in for them, looking for the Sherman. But it's, it's on... Protected at the moment. And we also have the Panzer II. Luke's claiming his 10th kill. Veteran C2. Vet 3 rifles. Oh, folks currently here with only one soldat and one, none of that. And it is actually temporarily a triple cap in favour of Markov, giving a, an advantage of 3-4-3 three, three, plays 3-3-2. Three, three, Panzer II. And here he is, the Panzer IV, grading the Pintle Mount machine gun finally have our first me medium tank out for PGA. He's kept his light tank alive, so he's actually in a really decent position now. Oh, yes, the Kubel may have died, but the fact that he's got this cradle of filth on the f battlefield causing death, destruction, and an early grave for many a brave infantryman soon. Battle of the mediums. Oh, an overshot from the Panzer IV misses the Sherman. But nearly obliterates the... Uh... There we go. We haven't seen the pack howitzer for a long time. And he's finally taken it back. Never actually caught what killed it. 
may have even been an overshot at this rate by the looks of the amount of misses we're seeing. Panzer IV is gleeful in its abandon. Not waiting for any of this uh, officer squad to uh, surrender or sign the papers. They're just looking to gun them down like dogs. Stern Pioneers with the Browning Automatic. They throw out the frying pan looking for a mine. Narrowing down, I suppose, Markov's uh, choice of commander. He knows he's not up against Pershing if he's not seeing any mines. Think about it. Panzer two, Marauding. Gets a double bazooka to the face. But I tell you what, she's going to be able to keep repairing. And we do have the automatronic engineers from the mechanised regimental headquarters. So uh, it can just afford to trade efficiently against Markov. Constantly uh, claiming manpower casualties when repairing and then back into the battle without even a pause for thought, really. Sherman now already on his 15th kill. However, the truck did stand in the way of it in the first ground. It is maybe a big follow-up shot. Misses yet again. Raquette and Werfa in position, as is now the Panzer IV. Meanwhile, in the centre, the Panzer II is up against the MGs. Pakowitz is firing once again. It's gotten four kills already. And here comes that lieutenant with the double bazooka for the light AT option. We also have the rear echelons with bazookas now. As well, and a rifle aid in on the Lukes. This could be the death of the light tank. It survived thus far, but not in the wake of rear echelon aggression. Good blob of folks grenade as awaits, however, and the Major's forced away. The riflemen are going to stand guard, as are the airborne in a last stand against PGA, trying to force his way back into the centre of the battlefield. Again, in that high ground, but he doesn't fancy it, and the grenade was very, very well dodged. Let's have a little check on the stats in this lull of activity. You can see the points held is equal. The army values have now gone in Markov's favour even more so. And on the overview, you can see that the KDs are roughly equal. The best unit for um, Markov is indeed the rifleman. The and go on, let's check out PGAs just for the fun of it. He's got folks going as his. It's very infantry orientated battle thus far. Very easy to claim. Sherman's got no targets in the south. Airborne eats a huge Panzer IV shot. And I'll tell you what, pa this Panzer IV's got <laughs> a squad member and a tree in his tracks. What is this adaptive camouflage? It's a Mirage tank from Red Alert 2 gone hel hellaciously wrong. Release him! That's disgusting. I hate to see it. It's because he's got a non-historical skin. That's probably what it is. Sentry grenade denies the area. Rifleman and lieutenant push in as to the rear action squad. And here comes the plucky Sherman shark face. Look at that victory point to quality. 298 plays 309. There's barely anything in it. We've seen constant tidal forces, ebbs and flows throughout this battle. Well, what are our next steps? Ah, here we go. PGA selected, has he? Want some heat shells, does he? Thinking of a Sturm Tiger, is he? Possibly, yes. North. Looks like 50 cal's attaining veterancy. Bit of green cover. Or heavy cover times two in the way. There's this one and there's this one. Folks are going to get suppressed for a long time. And they're actually going to win this battle if uh, Markov is not careful. Check out the centre. Sherman casually traverses his turret and plinks away at the first grenadiers. Hesitates to go north. And there you go, there's that gun crew lost. And he might lose the entire thing, but the first grenadiers are now the guys in peril. Lieutenant had no munitions for a grenade and instead goes straight for the victory point. Markov and PGA are now drawn into this affair of endurance. 
fatigue and manhood. Who's going to go the full distance and reign victorious? Every minute you play a long battle like this, you're more invested. All that time spent to, um, com in combat with your foe. And it just increases the stakes incrementally, you know? It's almost as though the amount to which you hate losing is the length of the battle. Or the amount you put into it. Put in top 50 Company of Heroes 2, 1 versus 1. It's almost a guarantee that you put in everything you've got into it or you're just going to lose. You're getting really towards the high end of the efficiency curve when you get to the top... Th I think these guys are both top 30, actually. I think it's fairer to say top 30. Sherman on 19 kills. Panzer IV on 11. Airborne now hit Veteran C3. As the pack how it's his second life claims his fifth kill. North side. Again, the 50 kills giving itself a difficult situation. A good MG traverse here. He should surely run away now. Doesn't want to die in the house. And he packs up and gets the hell out of there. On yes, it is only a slither of health. But, uh, oh my god, he's setting up again. He's mad. What was that, Markov? Jackson, that's what. Sorry, Miss Jackson. <laughs> As the double bazookas do nothing against the Panzer IV. And that's why he needs a Jackson. As we see now, 299 victory points versus PGA's 294. In a, a very neutral one victory point each scenario for now. Sherman watches on as the 50 cars recruit for the third time, possibly even the fourth. In the south, we see that the Vet 5, 17 kill folks, Grenadiers, are denying the fuel, but for how much longer? There you go, they're going to back away. They've only lost one Soldat at this point. Good push. I was going to herd an MG. There it is. I thought it was a good push in. It's just overwatching the retreat path, it would seem. Sixteen kill. Panzer IV reverses away as the Stern Pioneers with that Browning would thinking of neutralizing, but they're very expensive. And... Uh, I tell you what, here he is, the big heavy duty booty of the Sturm Tiger is on the field. And uh, he's going to cause some serious issues. I tell you what, this camouflage is so bad, I'm actually going to check mid game whether we can change the. Um, you can't change mid game, everybody. We are stuck with what I can only describe as the worst skin in the game. Whatever that is, the nemesis. Very much like, looks like the artwork for the Alton Towers famous uh, roller coaster ride, Nemesis. So that's what we're going to call this Sturm Tiger. Best way to play with the Sturm Tiger, of course, is to fire through garrisons or um, sight blockers like a hedgerow. You can, uh, you can very much blast your opponent into space using that. Gives them less time to uh, react, of course. And in this case, I think um, PGA is going to go for the tactic of waiting for his opponents to push on him with an attack move command or, or what have you. Key, key, keys VG and... Ah, he's been uncovered before he can unleash his first of many rockets. He attacks that tree to deprive his opponents of oxygen. And also the telegraph poles to supply, to uh, ruin his supply lines. Great idea from uh, Panzergrenadier Angreifen. North side. Uh, 50 cars just watching him on peril. He's heard the Sturm Tiger now and he's like, well, that's our days numbered. <laughs> Being a support crew gunner, especially an isolated one, knowing what kind of Wunderwaffs. The uh, Germans have. Mobile Tree Army launches itself at the Sherman. As the Jackson has yet to do much at all. I think it may have hit the pan... Must have hit the Panzer IV once, I guess. Because it's got a little bit of damage or something. I've never really seen the Panzer IV in peril though, really. There it is. That's what's going to give it veteracy. It's nearly at veteracy one now. So I equate that's its third hit. 
Sturm Teague is ready to fire again. Can Morkov see it? Yes, he can. Does he cancel? No, he does not. He does a lot of health damage, however. Just want to see the uh, reload time. There it is. 40 seconds. 40 seconds to wait for rocket number three on the zero kill. It's not really a nemesis, is it? More of a, a friendly space project. That was a good pack carry round we saw one frame of there. Stern Pioneers throw themselves on the line for the Reich yet again. 285 victory points each, by the way. We just saw an equalization for the first time in a long time. With the ambulance pulled forward. And the reinforcement points of Markov's really starting to... Uh, Put himself in a good position and got the Panzer IV pushing in. Oh, what an obliteration there. That was a misfire and the Sturmtiger uses this to its advantage. The confusion of warfare to get a huge shot in there. Third rocket, three kills only, but a lot of health damage done as well. Panzer IV very lucky to escape, however. We did have the M1AT gun. No, the Jackson rather. Must be the second built Jackson. Is it? Why is this one on? Oh no, he's past Vetro C1. I'm my bad. I'm an idiot. I was yeah, of course. I forgot how experience bars work. Ignore me. Why am I tired today? I've actually had the day off work. Well, I did a lot of study. Lieutenant dropping a lot of models. I'm studying for my uh, one of my final ever exams. I am 30, and I hopefully should be finished by the time I'm 31 by this rate. And also rewrote the Master League rules. Which was a chore I'd been putting off for about four weeks. So finally done that. Because we do have an, indeed a Master League tournament coming up in the last two weekends of August. So the first one was awesome. Corona Cup was awesome. Looking likely that we're going to do one big... Here we go, Sturm Tegas ready. Is he? Is he firing? He doesn't cancel it ever. He just hopes to constantly deny area. What's the point in cancelling if you can just keep obliterating... Yes, indeed. The uh, ooh, we got the Sherman against First Grenadiers. The North Mass League is coming again. I'm looking to uh, get an announcement out for the second ever tournament this weekend, and it's going to be extremely exciting. And I don't say that say that as needless hyperbole. It's just the actual format of it is uh, never before been tried in coming to Heroes, or probably any tournament. To be fair, it's uh, it's very innovative. So look forward to that soon. Trust me, it's not going to be Ostrupen. Versus mechanized every single game. Sherman hauling ass into the picture there. That was, he got ahead of steam. Suffers one Faust and another. But the first credit is Vetra C5. Do they die? No, they don't. What a timely pin by the heroic MG34, keeping PGA's best infantry squad alive. We also had a bazooka round dropped there. Double Raketenwerf is pushing against the Jackson. Sturm Tiger's locked and loaded. Is he going to take out the captain here? I'm thinking about it. He's thinking about it. There he is. Captain is obliterated. There's a chunk of him. Did you see that chunk? Wasn't a very nice gift for the M1 AT gun. Just have that rolling past. Oh, look. There's Jeff. Big shout out to everybody in chat. we got White Flash Reborn. Ed 80 Hertz. Pen Clip. Etc. And uh, if you're wondering, Nemesis. Did I just lose my... Uh, I felt like I lost my UI there. I didn't know that was possible. He's up to eight kills. That's what I wanted to say. Panzer IV himself is on 22. Nice shot there. Did I say 22? I meant 24, of course. Riflemen are very brave to stick in that one. Nearly were very foolish as well. Bargaining with the entire squad's life. Rakatans push in, daring the Sherman into the picture. And they're just so foolish to do so. Still, the victory point situation remains ever so close. 274 versus 271. North side, Fultz Grenadiers have capped that. Meaning uh, 
It's now the Airborne's turn in the south to cap the southern victory point. Sturm Tigers ready yet again. And Bazooka is taken for the Jack of All Trades, Master of Non Squad. This Swiss Army knife, Apache attack, Holocots of Veteran C5, Sturm Pioneers. And he has another Sturm, this of the Tiger variety, hitting a bit of elevation on the map. Also getting snared, also getting attacked in the rear from the Sherman. However, the Rakettenwerfers are in the picture. We also have Faust waiting and the Panzer IV. Is the Sherman going to lose its life before the Sturm Tiger dies? Yes, it is. Sturm Tiger survives and the Jackson misses from afar. Now the Rakettenwerfers are going to turn their attention. However, a huge shot from the M1 also misses. But there's the follow-up from the Jackson getting the kill. It now in turn dies. Bites the dust as the Rakettenwerfers kill it during the out-of-control animation. Jackson for a Sturm Tiger and a Sherman. Not so sure that trade was worth it. He does, however, have a lot of fuel. Does Markov. So um, all's fair in love and warfare. And um, we see that, uh, to be honest, if we look at the stats, we're probably going to see on the graphs that, uh, yeah, there you go. Markov's taken a bigger dive, but he does have a huge fuel reserves. And uh, he shouldn't end up being that far behind with his next level of expenditure, but it's manpower he's suffering for. And that's why uh, squad loss, sorry, unit losses such as this aren't what he wants. G34 packs up and heads home. North side, a little bit of um, quantitative easing from Markov, looking to redistribute his map presence. Relieve the pressure. Double Vet 5 Terminator squads just show their hand as the lieutenants being. Very brave in its capping of that central circle. Still no rocket artillery. The only indirect fire we have is this seven kill second iteration of the pack howitzer. There it is. The MG34 that was stolen is pushing away his former master's army. Bazooka's sending them home. We do have the option for another Sturm Tiger. And that's exactly what he's going to go for. Whereas we may have had a failed space program of the horizontal variety. We're now going to well and truly prove that uh, German Wunderwaffers still have their place. And this second attempt to launch several men or parts of men into space. Send orders, heavy MG, says the Sturm Tiger. In that, uh, ah, okay, it's just attacking this vehicle husk. Rear echelons, lucky to survive there. M1 AT guns got that superior rate of fire with veteran C3 now. As the bazookas push in, the Panzer IV, this baby's got 33 infantry kills, not too shabby to say the least. Markov, however. Temporarily had a triple cap there, and uh, that means that PGA's had to act, and act swiftly. This is a well and truly a slug match, isn't it? This is going to... And I'm not saying both players are slow and slimy. I'm saying they're slugging it out, which I think is like an American expression, meaning they're shooting each other in the face with shotguns, maybe? Who knows? Who knows? Main gun destroyed critical, as the Panzer IV escapes yet again. In the wake of superior American anti-tank destroying tactics. Very low health. Vet 5 squad. All the last remaining soldat. And retreats. Oh my god. A horrendous retreat path. But uh, there you go. He sneaks through the gap in the fence. He's going to be fine. Both of them are in fact. Taking advantage of the MG repositioning. They're looking to uh, get into position, but 200 victory points remain now for PGA. Sturm Tiger rearing its ugly head yet again against the Pack Howitzer. Pack Howitzer's not going to get out of there, surely. Yes, he is. Good reactions. Oh, did not pay off. I mean, he keeps the, the, the weapon, but the crew are obliterated. Folks, Grenadiers taking advantage of 
Ah, uh, cluster bombs on retreat. PJ has to be smart here. He retreats only the Stern Pioneers, but the first forward clusters get him. And that's a dead vet five folks right here. He did not need that to happen. Oh dear, oh dear. He did the right thing. Maybe he should have pushed south and then hard retreated, or pushed north and hard retreated. Either way, he was between a rock and a hard place, and he ended up with a rock to the face. He needs, absolutely needs the Stukazufus, doesn't he? That would be awesome in this situation. I mean, he can see what's going on. He can see it, but he's just not uh, taking full advantage, is he? Kattenwerf is trying to keep him into this victory point battle. Oh, my Lord. Here we go. More ma major artillery now. The Trinity has escaped the grenade, but we are going to see a triple cap in soon enough. Sturm Tiger. Denying area, it would seem. The PGA needs to do something bigger and better than what he has been because Markov looks like he's got more than enough for him. Looks like we've got a Jackson to replace his losses. Panzer IV forces away the airborne. Now looking for the 50 cal as well. Try and get some victory points back under his control. There's another triple cap goes against him. Raket and Verfus push in. It's a good uh, combo that is, isn't it? Tank goes in first, and then Raket and Verfus follow up afterwards. And look at the Jackson immediately having to reverse away. North side, Vet 5, Fitch ready is cap there. So there you go. You've seen PGA act upon the victory points and try and readdress the balance. There he is, the pyrotechnics display. Probably, probably for the Fiora's birthday or something, because he's not really having much else, many other effects. Post Grenadiers couldn't complete the cap and realise the situation is manpower inefficient and f are forced away. Fodish Grenadiers are using the moon to traverse the battlefield. Well, there you go. It is a moon, isn't it, indeed. A lot of DPS here, however. And suppression. Couldn't even decrew the M1 AT gun. More cluster bombs this time on the veteran. MG34, or, well, it, it did have veterancy. Panzer IV finds an angle on the Jackson. Where are the Rakettenwerfers? Is he going to reverse back into their loving embrace? Yes, he is. The uh, cluster bombs were nerfed last year to give you more time to react, I believe. And uh, in this game, really not seen the profit of that, let's say. Needs a good shot from the uh, Sturm Tiger this time. Oh, that isn't a wipe. Got snagged on a crater or something. Just the same happened to the Jackson's round, however, so all's fair in Moon Warfare. There you go, Vet 5, Panzer 4, with that superior mobility and rate of fire. And pretty much everything, probably. Leather pants for the crew. Um, better lubricants. Better rations. That kind of thing. Many veterans, veterancy perks. I'll tell you what, these folks really want to win this engagement in a big way because they know how much victory points are starting to matter with, with double-digit figures remaining now. It's getting situation hypercritical. Crew repairs for the Panzer IV. As Rakettenwerfers not even facing the right way. PGA is possibly slowing a little bit, it would seem. No, he was waiting to back himself into the garrison, perhaps. Give him the benefit of the doubt, let's say. Sturm Tiger's only got six kills. Let's check out the efficiency on the Sturm Tiger, actually. That's probably a good idea. That is the American. Even though I had the Germans selected, that's the Americans. Don't ask me how that one works. Sturm Tiger efficiency isn't even at 100%. Panzer IV is, though, 802%. Very nice. There you go. That's the kind of inefficiency we're talking about. Just threatening him away by being there. Rekertenwerfer couldn't quite traverse in time. Blob control from the Panzer IV now. Claiming his 45th, sorry, 6th kill. Machine guns for days. 
good neutralization of the central victory point and he's capping the north is pga getting back into this one stone tiger attacks the mg gun and yet again doesn't doesn't do anything that was just health damage so many ele elevation issues for the stone tiger i mean let's just check out if there is elevation there is a gradient on this map and there's one reason probably why you wouldn't see it in a tournament as well. Is, uh, there's a shallow gradient throughout. And that, of course, means Sturm Tigers are uh, rendered nearly useful, useless. As are a lot of the things that kill them, in fairness. But LEIG is the call. Creative name in chat. Top uh, player himself gives that a, uh, a dance game. But to be honest, it's going to be good for smoking out the center. Um, but he would have been better to get a, of course, a Stuka Zufus. And he would have been better to get that a long, long time ago. Nice shot there from the Stern Tiger. I noticed the audio went missing, and that's why. First Grenadiers, is both veterans. See five. Treating away as the Jackson comes to deal with the Stern Tiger. Nemesis. Two. The return. Panzer IVs looking for a little foray in the south. Possibly something bigger. Let's keep an eye on that. He's going for a safari. Drawing attention. Also spotting that that rifleman was very low health. Looked for his cheeky squad white. Couldn't quite get it off. He's drawing a lot of attention. And the rear and the Rakettenwerfers get good shots in on the Jackson. Panzer IV hit, gets hit long range, however... Rakettenwerfers really need to push in and take out the ambulance and the Jackson, in my opinion. The LIG, or the ISG rather, mixing up the two names, really could do with possibly smoking him out. Oh, he's doing good work against the uh, machine guns. Victory points are yet again go against the Chinese combatants. Sturm Tiger pushes further in, looking for... A kill that will get him back into this. But he's not going to get it by ambling forward that slowly. And that could be his demise, quite frankly. He needs to sacrifice himself now and go for a one huge shot. Is he going to do it? Is he going to get the killing blow? Grace. The saving grace and the killing blow, rather. Ah, he kills something, but he dies. And we see cluster bombs on the Rakat and Verfers. Oh dear, oh dear. This is why OKW is so bloody difficult to play against uh, USF, it would seem. Not just because of these abilities, but just due to the attritional warfare of coming up against um, an assailant that can do everything you can do, but a, a tiny bit better. People decrying that the Sturm Teague is useless in chat. I genuinely don't think it is. I just don't think it's good on maps with any sort of elevation. Put it on crossroads, firing behind hedgerows, and all of a sudden it's adequate. I'm not saying it's ever OP, but it's certainly not completely underpowered. As the Jackson roars forward, trying to take out the Vet 5 MVP unit of PGA's army. 70 victory points remain. Folks Grenadiers force their way in. As do the Rifleman and the Lieutenant waiting for them. However, ISG's already claimed five kills and more to come. Focusing on the MG. It's a good game to watch and learn, though. We are seeing efficient players with possible build order inefficiencies, in my humble opinion. As I said, we would like to have seen a, a Stuka Zufus. But this game still has legs. I am being Debbie Doubtful on PGA's OKW at this point. And I have been proven wrong many, 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 many times. Jackson looking for a crush. He doesn't quite have the turning circle to pull one off. Kind of just nudges you out of the way. And the Vosch Grenadiers do have the killing profile to get rid of those airborne. Meanwhile, in the center, as the consolidation 50-point commander spiel emanates from the loudspeakers, we see PGA start to get desperate. Very desperate. One-man Vosch Grenadiers are actually winning against three... Of the lieutenant squad there. Could actually win this battle. 
Meanwhile, Sturm pioneers bite the dust. However, the Rakettenwerfers have the Jackson in their range. Cluster bombs emanate from the sky above. As the Panzer IV is nowhere to be seen, having been pushed away by said Jackson. Look at the spread. It's horrendous. Folks, Grenadiers does win out there against the Lieutenant. Doesn't get, get the squad wipe, however. 25 points remain. He's got on a, well, an heroic victory point push here. However, that one man, Folks, Grenadier, now comes up against Airborne. Can he escape with his life? What cover do we have on the retreat path? Nothing. And the Airborne look to finish off the game here, in my opinion. Let's see if that holds true. Second Panzer IV coming out for PGA. He's going to have to get aggressive, it would seem. But without much of a cool contingent of infantry left. Jackson shot squiffs into the nether realm of the big underneath. That one hits, however. Rakettenwerfers are late to the party. Second Panzer IV out. As the folks Grenadiers march in, looking for a Faust. But everything looks ever so futile now. As the victory points tick down, is he going to let them bleed out into death? Or is he going to throw in the towel mercifully? Twenty-five kill. Veteran C5 folks Grenadiers are looking to finish this off as the Panzer IV. Goes for the Jackson Veteran C3. Can he get in there and finish the job? But there's another Jackson waiting. Now attaining Veteran C2. As the primary Jackson nearly destroys him. Markov's getting a little bit sloppy here. Vet 3, 50 cal. Does not suppress the folks Grenadiers. This could... You never know what can happen in company heroes. This could be fantastic. We have a bit of Panzer IV artillery. Could have almost seen a little bit more of this, in my opinion. 13 victory points remain as the Panzer IVs watch on. But look at this lieutenant urging his comrades into battle. Leading by example into the central gapping circle. Now up against stern resistance, but we need something to get in there. Otherwise, PGA's lost this. Will we see Markov cap and complete the game? It looks likely at this point. We had this Panzer IV upgrade, the Pindle Mount, so he doesn't have the Panzer Commander. Can't use artillery, only from one of the two platforms. Rakettenwerf for keeping the point neutral, but look in the south. We have, that's right, a Vet 350 Cal capping the southern victory point. He may save the situation in the center. But it could all be for nothing. Ali IG has hit Veteran C5, by the way. Oh dear, oh dear. Oh, there we go. Double Jacksons take out one of the Panzers. The other rushes forward, but it's all in vain. Oh dear, oh dear. Finishing touch from the Vet 3. There it is. As he throws artillery in from his radio. As he... Dies. More cluster bombs from the sky above. Four victory points tick down to two victory points. Drop in low. And here we go. PGA throw is out of the game. What a good battle that was. He battled strong and hard. 53 minutes and 8 seconds of combat. Let's check the statistics. And reveal that on the overview, we see uh, he did have a good KD. Markov overall, as you can see, on... Um, the army value graph was able to kill, able to keep higher priority assets intact for longer. On the points held, you can see that it was a very even battle all this while. It was just the preservation of the vehicles uh, that seemed to win out overall. And in my opinion as well, that pack howitzer are being recruited constantly, peppering his opponents, and no such reliance on Stukas of Usis from uh, Panzer Grenadier and Greifen. There's the unit tallies. Built and lost. And crude and uh, and uh, decrude. Let's check out, shall we? Do a little bit of a shuffle there. Get over to uh, P2. 
PGA. Reveal his stats. There you go as well. Two Sturm Teagers. He just about paid for the Sturm Teagers overall, but uh, he could have used them for much better. I mean, if you think about his Panzer IV efficiency, imagine if he'd been investing in Panzer IVs and maybe a Panther, or as I say, a Stukas of Fus. It would have been a better build order, wouldn't it? And uh, I do say that Vilashanka's elevation possibly meant uh, meant that it, it just wasn't as good as it otherwise could have been. Uh, I've been A. E. Thank you for watching this. Uh, if you're watching this on Twitch, it will be on YouTube later. And um, and yeah, hope you all have a pleasant week. I hope it all goes to plan and uh, everything, all your dreams come true. Let's just raid out now to another channel, shall we? Von Ivan. Let's